Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. David here. I hope you are all doing great. Um, we've been pretty busy lately. We, for those of you who follow me on social medias or are in the Discord, um, we just adopted a puppy, uh, and he takes a lot of our time. I am still here when it comes to like news coverage, but when it comes to original content like what we're doing today it's a bit harder for and it's going to be a bit harder for the next couple of days slash weeks so please bear with me on that hand of course if there's any type of news i'll be here though but today i think i have an interesting topic to talk about and the idea for this um for this topic comes from the episode 21 of the demon appreciation podcast uh, i'm gonna link it in the description if you guys want to listen to it my good friend tony for you a fellow megaton content creator once again i'll drop the link to his channel very underrated stuff i suggest you guys give him a follow check out his content he's awesome shout out to tony for you gaming and he said something he said something in that podcast episode that triggered a lot of reactions and Today, I felt like discussing this subject more in depth. Here's what he said. He said, Shin Megami Tensei 5 will be the Persona 5 of Shin Megami Tensei. Of course, when you hear it like this, some of y'all will probably say, all right, time for a dislike. I'm out, bitches. But today, <laughs> please give me a chance. We're going to talk and I'm going to explain what I think my friend here means. And I'm sure he's going to probably leave a comment or something saying what he thinks, if he has anything else to add. But I think it's interesting to look at this because when you first read it, it seems crazy. But when you start thinking about it, it's not that crazy. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Persona 5 is Atlas's biggest success to date, after the original version released on PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4, and the Royal re-release on PS4, the game is almost sitting at 5 million copies sold worldwide. The previous most successful Persona game that came before 5, without counting re-releases, was the original Persona on the PlayStation 1. Shin Megami Tensei 5 is right around the corner, and I think it has a solid shot at becoming the next best thing for Atlas in terms of critical reception and sales. But today, we're not gonna talk about that. I already made videos talking about the sales of Shin Megami Tensei 5 and its potential, all that good stuff. Today, I am here to talk about why I think SMT5 may have or will have the a similar impact on the Shin Megami Tensei series than Persona 5 had on the Persona series. So let's get into it. If you want to stay up to date on any type of news when it comes to Atlas Shin Megami Tensei Persona or you like general discussions and reviews for Megaton stuff, you're at the right place. Make sure to subscribe, ring the notification bell. I have some big things coming. And if you enjoy what you're listening to today, a thumbs up, it helps a lot. All right, let's get into it. So first thing first, I think the biggest thing to take into consideration here is the fact that Shin Megami Tensei 5, just like Persona 5, is going to release on a very healthy install base, on a very healthy system. What I mean by that is that when Persona 5 came out, a couple years back, it released on PS3 and PS4, and the, both those systems were very successful, especially the PS4, meaning that it released on an extremely large install base. Now, when Shin Megami Tensei 5 will release, the Nintendo Switch is, go is not going to be as large as PS4 and PS3 when P5 came out, but it's still going to be close to 100 million users. There's almost 100 million Switches out there at the moment, and it's very, very good to see. The game, we were all complaining. The game was announced in January of 2017, and silence, and it's coming out four years later in 2021. And I know I said that before, I'm sure I did. Other creators said it. You guys watching, you probably said it too. Why isn't the game out already? Well, I think they took their sweet time with it and the final result is awesome. But what I wanna get at here is the fact that it's going to release at a time where there's a ton of Nintendo Switches out there. Shin Megami Tensei 4 released in 2013 exclusively for the 3DS. 2013. That was pretty much at launch for the 3DS. There was so little 3DSs out there, and the game managed to sell 900,000 copies worldwide, making it the best-selling Shin Megami Tensei mainline game at the time of release. So, SMT5 is gonna release on an install base that's like 10 times larger, and I gotta say that the software attach rate for the Switch is extremely high as well. What that means is people who own Nintendo Switch's consoles, they buy a lot of games. Uh, it's not like the PSP where there were like 80 million PSP PlayStation portables out there, but the attach rate was like 
two or three because of probably because of the acting scene the PSP got act very quickly but people were not buying a lot of games in terms of the switch the attach rate is way higher than that people are buying a ton of games I have like almost 40 games on my switch already um, so people are buying games people are buying games and there's so many people out there this is a similar situation to persona I'm not gonna lie I don't know too much about the PlayStation 4 and 3's attach rate but I do know that there were even more systems out there so I think like SMT5 will follow in P5's footsteps in terms of on the console and the install base that it's gonna drop on Another thing that really hits you right away when you look at the trailers and all that stuff and when you you talk with someone who isn't familiar with Shimagami Tensei the first thing that they tell me is wow that game looks awesome the game is attractive the characters are interesting they're appealing even if you don't know what this series is you look at those demon models you look at Nahobino and the hair and you're like wow the game looks attractive. Persona 5. The menus, the flashy colors, the uh, the, the character designs, the, the art, the art direction. It is flashy. It is attractive to the eye. If you have no idea what Persona 5 is, you look at the game and you're like, wow, that's a showpiece. That It may not be the most beautiful game out there, but the art direction makes it freaking amazing. Shin Megami Tensei 5, the game's not out, people are already saying that it's the best looking game on Switch in terms of graphics, so that's a good, but it is also attractive. Shin Megami Tensei 4 is one of my favorite games of all time, it is in my top 3 games of all time. When you look at it, you're not blown away, you're like, it's a fantastic game, the character designs are great, the demons are great, everything looks great, but it doesn't stand out as much as SMT5 does. SMT5, once again, is right there with Persona 5 in terms of catching the eye of the general consumer who doesn't, who isn't necessarily into niche Japanese RPGs like we are. So, I think it is going to benefit from that, just like Persona 5 benefited from the fact that it looks freaking awesome. It's a standout. P4 looked great and all, P3 as well, but P5 is like, it has the colors, it has the attractive characters, it has everything that it needs to reach and pick on certain people out there that are something maybe you can call a casual gamer sometimes. Another thing that both P5 and Shin Megami Tensei 5 did is the marketing campaign. Now, Persona 5 was pushed a lot by Atlas. Obviously, the game took years to release, there was a lot of trailers that were shown, there were teasers, but the marketing campaign was really good. We kept getting trailers, we kept getting a look at the characters, and they're doing the exact same thing with SMT5. Um, some people are complaining when it comes to the western branch of Atlas, Atlas West. But I, even Atlas West, I think they're doing a great job. They're showing the characters, they're publishing on social medias, uh, uh, Maza Yuki Doi's commentary when it comes to the demon design and how we made them, the history behind them. Uh, in Japan, they're probably doing a 10 out of 10 job, to be honest. Uh, lots of trailers, news reports, uh, like literally news reports where there's a reporter talking about what's coming next and new stuff about Shin Megami Tensei 5. Um, they waited until the game was ready to show a lot of it. That's always a good. You avoid controversy. You make sure that you show it when you're ready to show it. And I feel like they did a fantastic job. They, they, they've been a bit silent in terms of the, you know, 2018, 2019. We were very desperate. But when July 2020 hit, it started to go really well. Uh, so they waited to show it until they were ready. The demon reveals every single day in Japan, and they're now doing two demons a day. That's fantastic. 50 seconds clip of Nahobino, a small cutscene, the, the, the specific demon that they're revealing that day, fighting alongside you on field, what he looks like. This is just awesome. SMT5 is the most wanted game in Famitsu. It's been the most wanted game for Famitsu for two weeks now. One week, um, where it wasn't, but one week it was, it wasn't, and this week it is the most wanted game once again in Famitsu. So, what I want to get at with those arguments here is the fact that Persona 5 became the most successful game in the Persona series, critically and sales wise. Shin Megami Tensei 5 is going to do the same thing. So, you can quote me on that. You're watching this video, it is September 2021. I said it, I think. Shin Megami Tensei 5 will be the Persona 5 of SMT games. SMT 4 did great, 
but it didn't blow up as much as I think SMT5 will do critically and sales wise. So this is definitely a big opinion piece. This is definitely a discussion video. I want to hear what you guys think. Do you think it makes sense? Do you think SMT5 will have a similar impact on the Shin Megami Tensei series as Persona 5, the fifth installment, had on the Persona series? When people played P5, when they were done with the game, they put the game aside, they played P4, they played P3, and the hardcore people that really liked it, they even played the P2 duology and P1. SMT5 is going to have a similar impact. People are going to play SMT5, they're going to be, holy crap, what's next, what's accessible, Nocturne HD, they're going to pick up Nocturne HD, they're going to enjoy it, wow, that's awesome, I want something similar, DDS 1 and 2, SMT4 on 3DS, Apocalypse, they're gonna play the 3DS ports. It's going to become the next game. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm optimistic, but as you can see, there's good reasons to believe Shin Megami Tensei 5 is going to do something similar to P5. Thank you all so much for watching. Once again, if you're new, subscribe, ring the notification bell, all that good stuff, kitty. And make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it as well. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye.